I'm Pastor Chris. I'm from JK, uh, my church, JKI in Jakarta. And I'm, uh, it's such an honor for me to share God's word with all of you. And I pray what I'm about to share is going to bless uh, all of you. It would encourage you, uh, especially during this hard season that we are going through together. I pray that God uh, strengthens you and uh, uh, encourage you to go through all this. Um, and meanwhile, uh, I pray that what I'm about to share will be a blessing to all of you. So uh, during last year, uh, early in 2020, when uh, COVID-19 was uh, starting to break out in our country, uh, it was quite hard for us as a church because uh, before COVID-19 break out, uh, my father, as the senior pastor of our church, passed away uh, suddenly. He was very healthy. He was. He just loved to eat and uh, the eating problem that he has got him into trouble. So anyway, uh, so he suddenly passed away uh, without, it, it caught us by surprise because none of us was expecting, uh, none of us ever thought that he, because he was pretty young, he was still young. As you can see, I'm also still young. So my father is rel relatively young. So it, would, it, it caught us by surprise that he uh, suddenly he passed away after four days in a hospital. Uh, it, it was a shocking news for us. We were break, uh, we, uh, our, our, our heart broke and we were just so sad with the news. After my dad passed away, a week after, then the COVID-19 starts to break out in Indonesia. So, if you, if, so as you can imagine, it's like uh, it, the church, uh, if you know, like uh, our, our church has just uh, passed the, the leadership to my father uh four years ago so it's like oh, our church is still new we are still transitioning from the old leadership towards my father and during uh like uh, after four or five years after my father uh minister uh, lead the church suddenly he has to pass away so there is going uh, there is there has been such a lot of transition uh, transition in our church it's not easy for us um especially after my dad passed away when uh when we are about to transition the leadership uh, of the church towards towards my mom and uh, towards me, uh, things suddenly go goes from bad to worse. Uh, when COVID nineteen start, uh, suddenly break out in a in a country, uh, the church has to stop. You know, the service of the uh, the service in our church has to stop for about uh, two or three months. It was quite hard for us. It was a very difficult season uh, for me as a pastor. Uh, I'm also a preacher, so I uh, was uh, usually was invited to places to preach, and suddenly uh, on that uh, during the COVID nineteen breakout, all all, all of the ministries were, were were canceled, and the church had to shut down. That was pretty hard for us. It was very um, quite a stressful moment for all of us. The church had to go through. It was not easy. So those days I was I was sad and uh, you know like uh, for two months you have to stay at home you cannot do anything it was quite stressful uh, for me as well so I remember one one of the night I was very very uh, feeling low and I felt I felt I, w I was very depressed with everything I was I felt like I, I'm not good enough I can't do it I mean like uh, it's just it's just hard for me to take up the responsibility so soon. So uh, one day, one night I was praying to God and I felt like uh, God gave me a, a word from the uh, from the chapter of the Bible that I was reading at, at, at that day. Uh, it was on 2 Kings 4 verse 1 to 4. Uh, I'm just going to read it to all of you. Uh, 2 Kings 4 verse 1 to 4, it says that one day the wife of a man from the guild of prophets called out to Elisha. Your servant, my husband, is that you well know what a good man he was, devoted to God. And now the man to whom he was in debt is on his way to collect by taking my two children as slaves. Elisha said, I wonder how I can be of help. Tell me, what do you have in your house? Nothing, she said. Well, I do have a little oil. And here's what you do, said Elisha. Go up and down to the street and borrow jugs and bowls from all your neighbors and not just a few, all you can get. Then come home and lock the door behind you, you and your sons. Pour oil into each container when each is full, set it aside. So she did what he said. She locked the door behind her and her sons 
As they brought the containers to her, she filled them. When all the jugs and bowls are full, she said to one of her sons, Another jug, please. He said, That's it. There are no more jugs. Then the oil stopped. Uh, I believe this is a very familiar story to all of us uh, growing up as a Christian. I believe uh, we've read this chapter uh, a lot of times in our life and I've heard about uh, sermons about this so many times in my life as well. But that night, particularly that night, it was this, this verse just suddenly becomes so alive to me because suddenly I felt like God uh, encouraged me. God, I feel like God speak to me that um, what, I have to, what I have to focus on is to keep pouring my oil. There's two things that uh, that God particularly speak to me during those those uh, I remember last year during during those uh, months of the first COVID breakup, I I remember God spoke to me about two things. Uh, the first thing He He asked me to do is to check my oil, uh, and I believe this is the word for all of you as well. You got to learn to you gotta you gotta start checking your oil. You gotta start to see what oil do we, do we have because uh, often we we thought that. In order for us to be used by God, in order for us to be good enough, in order for us to do something big, it requires something that we do not have. It requires something that we need to pursue first. But I've seen in the Bible that God always uses what we have in our hands and it's never out of our reach. You see, uh, this woman, when, when, when God wanted to provide her with something, when God wanted to bring her a breakthrough, God never asked her uh, to give something that she don't have. But like the response of this woman is uh, more or less uh, is how, uh, uh, how we always often responded when asked, what do we have? We always say, we don't have anything. Whenever we, are, we were asked to uh, serve God with what we have, sometimes we thought like, we don't have, we don't have anything. The first response of this woman was like nothing. When Elisha asked, what do you have in your house? She said, I got nothing. Well, uh, she, that's not entirely true because she did have something. She did have something, but she felt like what she has is not good enough. It's, not, it's just not enough to do anything with the, with the, with the current situation that she's in. She needs to pay a debt. She needs to pay, uh, she need to, uh, she need to pay uh, the, debt, the debt of, his, of, of her husband. So she felt like what I have is not enough. What can a, a jar of milk do? I mean, like, what can it do? Like, uh, what I have is just so insignificant. I feel like this cannot do anything, but I've learned uh, that God always uses what we have, even when it feels like it's insignificant. You remember the story of five loaf and two fish, how God multiplies it to feed 5,000 people? It started with something so insignificant. It's just five loaf and two leaves. Uh, so insignificant that the, the disciple would eventually ask Jesus, what can we do with this? I mean, like, there's too many people. We cannot do anything. Just send them home. That's, that's always how we respond. We felt like what we are expected to do and what we have in our hand doesn't match up. And we feel like we cannot do anything because we are just so small. We don't have anything that requires for us to do big things. But then I realized one thing that God spoke to me uh, last year about checking what we have uh, to see, uh, uh, learn to see how God sees. That's what God is, has been teaching me uh, last year. To see that what I have, just con uh, what, uh, check what I have, check my oil. And I see, I I've learned that I know uh, there's so many things I'm lacking, uh, leadership skills and everything, but I believe God is preparing me for that, for that moment. And I feel, and I believe that if God put us in that, in one season, He, he knows that we are well equipped to go through the seasons. So back then, uh, during the first COVID uh, breakout, I start to, uh, when I felt like, I, I feel like I just want to give up on everything, you know, like it's, it's very hard for me. And I felt like I don't know what to do. I felt I lost my vision. I don't know what to do. And I th that night when God told me to check my oil, I realized that actually it's not that I don't have anything. I still have things that I could do. Uh, during this COVID-19, during the time when we all have to stay at home, I still can do something. So I remember those days I start to uh, shoot video of me preaching because one thing I know I'm good at is I, I'm good at leading. I'm good at, I'm good at you know, I, I, can, I can encourage people with my words. I can share what I've learned. I've, I can share my walk with God. And that's what I've been doing during the, during the stay at home COVID breakout 19 in uh, 2020 in Indonesia. So what I do, I start to pour my oil. After this, the first one is you, you got to learn to check your oil, see what oil you have because all of us has oil. God never give us something without first equipping us with 
something to uh, conquer it. So I believe all of us, no matter how insignificant we feel like we don't have anything or whatever it is, I believe there's some oil that we still have. Sometimes uh, the one thing that uh, hold us back from uh, experience, experiencing God's miracle is the feeling that we are not good enough. But I believe God never wait for us and God, God never requires us to be good enough. God just want us to be willing enough to be used by Him, willing enough to do what we have, willing enough to pour what we feel is insignificant. So the first thing is checking my oil. The second thing God told me to do is start pouring it. You know, it's it's one thing to know what you you're good at. It's one thing to uh, to know that you you can do something. It's it's a whole another thing when you uh, start to act on what you have. You start to pour it. And I felt like the first time I I started to pour. You know, you know, for me to start to record myself in, in an empty space, it feels awkward because I'm used to preach uh, uh, with people on it, uh, alive, laughing. You know, and people clapping hands. Suddenly, it's just very silent for me. It's very awkward. I, I have never, uh, I, I'm never used to that. So I start to do what, uh, but I start to do it. I start pouring my oil. I start encouraging people with my words through videos, uh, through. Uh, phones you know i start to record myself record the preaching the sermon i i try my best even when the church members cannot join in the church uh i try my best to think of a way how to uh minister them through videos uh so i start putting my oil i start recording my preaching sermon i start putting it on youtube and things were quite okay but sometimes you know when you start to pour your oil one of the things you will find out is you feel you feel like you know like what you do what you pour is like sometimes you feel like oh, they did it better i mean look at my videos look at my sermons is uh, messed up you know sometimes i feel like it's not good enough it's it's i mean like i i hope i could preach like pastor robert robert you know like i hope i can preach like uh these people i hope i could do this i hope i could do this sometimes i feel like i'm very small and i couldn't do anything i feel like what i pour when i pour my oil it's just so so small oil so tiny uh it's like very 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 insignificant sometimes the the worst thing uh i, I realized what happened during those days is the feeling of like maybe i'm not called to do this you know maybe people are just better at it and i'm just i'm just not I'm just not created to do this. I can't do this. It's so weird. It's so, so one of the things that I realize causes me to feel that way is comparison. So I, I've learned that uh, comparison is the number one uh, call, uh, the number one killer of your calling. If you want your calling to be killed, you start to compare with people, because when you start to compare with people, you start to feel like you you either feel superior or you feel inferior, and that's how I felt. So I realized that when I, whenever I start to compare my ministry, what I do, what, my oil with somebody else, I realized that uh, that is the moment when you will stop pouring your oil. But the verse say when you stop pouring your oil, then uh, the oil stops flowing. Uh, when, when there is no more vessels, there is no more place for you to pour your oil, then the oil stops. I realized that uh, at that moment, God is like teaching me that my job is to pour the oil. My job is to be faithful with the small things because I am not responsible for the outcome. My, my, my responsibility is to be faithful with what God has entrusted me with and trust God for the outcome of what I'm doing. So I remember those days were things were very hard. Even when I start to record my message, I start to uh, share it with church members. I realized that uh, and then uh, I realized that the people in my church, they, uh, well, we minister in a very poor community. So uh, most of our church members are scavengers. They, uh, they make a living by picking up trashes, you know, that, that's uh, because we, my father and my mother were called to minister in a very poor community. Uh, I was there because I felt that God called me there as well. So we ministered there. So it was very hard for our church uh, to you know to to do online services because for them to pay internet they don't they have to buy internet to watch uh youtube they have to buy internet to in order to join uh the worship experience and you know to 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 listen to the sermon of the pastors so people stop watching you know people uh, the church members stop watching because they don't have enough money especially during covid breakout their economy crashes so 
it's very hard for them to to continue uh, service and the church online. It's very hard for us to do it online. So I remember those days we were uh, we start to think of a way how to uh, how to how to be able to serve them uh, without them having to be online and stuff like that. So by God's grace, we start to maybe like write, you know, we write it on uh, uh, messages, we write sermons, messages, you know, we don't record it. We do record it, but for some who, people who can watch it, but we also make a uh, transcript of the um, uh, sermons. And then we also, uh, during those COVID-19 breakout, we give out food for people in our church. We open church for, uh, we, we, we don't open church. We we give out food, uh, so we uh, some of uh, the church members we uh, ask them to deliver food to people who are in needs and aren't able to ha uh, have any income. So that that's what we do. We we are faithful in doing what we are trusted to do, and we've seen that whenever we are uh, faithful in doing what we do, God is always faithful for the outcome. Uh, this year, our church are, uh, has has been reopened. Uh, the, our governor, uh, because our church is considered small church, so governor allow a ch smaller church to open. So during uh, when we we start to open the church, we've seen that the church the church actually doesn't does not lose any member. With uh, at first, I thought like when my father passed away in this Corona uh, virus breakout, you know, people are just going to start leaving our church. But but then when we we see the church uh, the church reopens, we see uh, there is uh, multiplication in the church members. People start coming to our church. People start to be disciple. Uh, we even managed to uh, raise up new pastor in our church, and we've seen that during this this season uh god has been establishing so many things in our church we've seen god is working and i believe uh what i want to share what i want to encourage you is just be faithful in pouring your oil be faithful in whatever insignificant things you feel like you're doing i believe every small things that you're doing for god with the right motivation it actually matters because i believe when you start to be faithful with what you have god will start uh your oil will start to multiply we sometimes we thought like we have to have more oil first and then we start to pour but the kingdom of heaven does not work that way the kingdom of heaven always works whenever you pour the oil it will start to multiply so uh whatever whatever oil you have right now start pouring it do not ever don't ever compare with other people when you compare it to those spiritual giants will always feel inferior and when you compare it with other people uh, lower than you, you will always feel superior and both of them are not good. So what you have to do is just be faithful with what you have because all of us have different calling. We are called to do, uh, each callings are different. And I believe all of us are serving one God and that's what we have to do. Faithful with what we have and trust God for the outcome. Thank you. God bless you. I hope this bless all of you. See you for another devotion video.